Hello, it's Carl Brower, and I'm standing next to the 2025 Genesis GV80. This is a luxury midsize SUV that competes with models like the Audi Q7, the BMW X5, the Lexus RX, Mercedes GLE, and Porsche Cayenne. Though with a starting price of $59,000, it's less than all of those. For 2025, the Genesis GV80 received what's called a mid-cycle refresh. These are very common in the industry, and they rarely involve anything more than front end styling, rear styling, and maybe some interior updates. They don't mean a complete redesign, so things like the chassis are identical, and even the drivetrain in this case is the same. Not surprisingly, the changes for the 2025 Genesis GV80 are mostly cosmetic on the outside. Larger front air intakes and a revised grille, and monoblock front brake calipers. It also got a body colored rear bumper but it did get one functional upgrade, and that is new headlights that feature micro lens array technology. These actually do improve the lighting capability of the headlights. All GV80s include all wheel drive and an eight speed automatic as standard equipment. And the base engine is a 2.5 liter turbo four. It makes 304 horsepower and offers 19 city MPG and 24 highway MPG. The Turbo 4 model only comes with two rows of seats, but it is highly equipped. Even the most base model at $59,000 comes with a long list of impressive standard features. These include 19 inch wheels, heated front seats, a navigation system, a power lift gate, wireless phone charging, and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you want a three-row GV80, you've got to get the 3.5 liter V6 twin turbo. This engine makes 380 horsepower and offers 16 city MPG and 22 highway MPG. It's only offered in the advanced and prestige trim levels and starts at $75,000. Beyond its three rows of seats, the V6 version ups the standard equipment list substantially. It starts with 20 inch wheels and continues with an active suspension, a power folding third row seat, panoramic sunroof, leather upholstery, four zone automatic climate control, heated and ventilated front seats, a heated rear seat, a Bang & Olufsen audio system with active noise control, and a head up display. It's also got digital key technology that lets you unlock, start, and drive the car with just your smartphone. No other key required. All of that comes standard on the advanced trim level. But if you go to the top of the trim tree and get the V6 twin turbo with the prestige trim, you get 22 inch wheels, upgraded leather on the seats and headliner, second row seats with heating, ventilation, and power adjustments, a heated center armrest, power closing doors and rear sunshades, a digital rear view mirror, and an electronic limited slip rear differential. The Prestige trim starts at $80,000, and this one I'm standing next to checks in at $82,150 because it's got this more expensive matte green paint. It was inspired by Scotland, according to the Genesis folks, and it adds $1,350 to the total price of this $82,150 Genesis. Probably the biggest news for this mid-cycle refresh is the 27-inch OLED display screen that now comes standard on all trim levels of the Genesis GV80. Now you hear 27 inches and it sounds like it's going to be huge, but the truth is it's 27 inches long, but it is not very tall. So it doesn't actually block you from seeing the road and it's not very distracting, yet it provides a lot of information. You know, Mercedes Benz was one of the first ones to do this gauge cluster combined with central touchscreen presenting a wall of digital information. They were one of the first and theirs actually was kind of big and you could argue was distracting. I feel like the more recent cars that are adopting this, including the new Genesis GV80 for 2025, they've done a better job of making the screen informative and tall enough to give you the information, but not so tall as to be distracting while you drive. There are a lot of high-tech and luxurious features inside this Genesis GV80. Some of them are new for 2025. Let's get into all of these things. Let's start with the center console controls that feature kind of Genesis trademark crystal effect. This is the shifter, this is the center touchscreen controller, and this is the drive mode dial. Now, when you look at this controller for the center touchscreen, you see that it not only is a joystick that can move back and forth and up and down and twist, but it also has a touchscreen control here where you actually have a touch pad as opposed to using the screen. 
Now, if you go up to the screen here, you can also still use traditional touch controls, but this panel down here, and this dial, will allow you to go through all of these features in this car. And let's give an example of, say, how you can use the touchscreen controls, okay? If you go to setup, and you go to sound, this new Bang & Olufsen system has 18 speakers, and it's got this Biosonic control system where you use the touch panel on the top of that dial that's down in the center console I talked about, and you can actually change audio settings by moving from more or less energetic and bright and warm. It's, it's very simple and straightforward. People who are audiophiles may not like the idea that you can't separately control bass and treble, but I played around with this and it was pretty effective in giving you a nice mix of bass, treble, and maybe kind of energetic or relaxed. That's where maybe the drums are coming through more or less strong. So that's just one example of that. There's also this mood curator system that they've introduced. And what it does is it combines audio, interior lighting, which would be more effective at night, of course, seat controls, and specifically massaging, and you can see this button here actually turns on a kind of a scent spray that it sprays into the cabin. And you have all these different settings. Let's, let's go for comfort, right? So you put it in comfort mode, you hit start, and everything from immediate seat massaging starts happening to a, 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 an image on this giant screen to um, an aroma being injected into the cabin to all help me relax. So this is a pretty interesting use of technology for, uh, for the new Genesis GV80 and something that Genesis wants to try to use to help set it apart from some of the other luxury cars out there. And this system, this audio system does sound really good. Bang & Olufsen did a great job uh, setting up these speakers in this system. Now you can stop that whenever you want. You can also see that this is a new steering wheel. Uh, it's been updated for 2025. It's got new updated controls. It's very easy to control things like the driver assist systems over on this side and then phone and audio over on this side with the uh, spoke controls. So a really good interior design in this car that I think is probably the highlight. This car looks good, it drives well, but sitting in it and enjoying this ginormous touchscreen and all the settings you can do with it and all the advanced features it has, that's where you really start to feel like you're in a premium vehicle. The other big interior news for 2025 is the availability of five new colors. This particular test car has kind of this earthy brown tone on the leather, and it looks good, but I think my favorite one that I saw was the white with blue contrasts inside. I just thought it looked beautiful, especially on the blue exterior color that's available in this car. The other big thing was you got double pane glass on the windshield and the front side windows to make the car even quieter at highway speeds, and it does work. This Genesis GV80 is very quiet at pretty much every speed. And actually, you know, driving this Genesis GV80, it's very interesting. It's clear that the company kind of carved out their own niche within the range of midsize luxury SUVs. It's not quite as engaging or as fun to drive as say a BMW X5 or certainly the Porsche Cayenne, but it's more entertaining than something like the Lexus RX. You know, the Hyundai brand is really on the move now. They're hitting record sales. They've hit really strong sales the last couple of years and they've built up their independent dealer base. They've now got 35 standalone dealers that are not associated with Hyundai dealerships, which is their parent company, of course, and it's where they, a lot of their early dealers started out. They also are very proud of the fact that they're the only Korean luxury brand, and there's this concept called So Nim, which means honored guest, and their ability to build their own separate dealerships really helps them enhance that theme and that environment. When you ask Genesis where are they getting their customers from, they say they get a lot of trade-ins from people with Acura RDXs or Lexus RXs, maybe tr looking to trade up to get to a three-row luxury SUV. They're of course also getting some long-standing Hyundai customers who are looking to upgrade, and they're even getting some older Mercedes-Benz ML and GL customers. With its stylish looks, engaging driving dynamics, superb interior material quality, high-tech pedigree, and value pricing. I can see all of these luxury buyers being drawn to the new Genesis GV80.